Good afternoon, everybody from um, beautiful Colorado. We're having an amazing day today. It's just gorgeous. Um, and uh, so my name is Edwige Simon, and I am the director of the Graduate Certificate in Language Teaching with Technology. It's a program that is offered by the University of Colorado Boulder, the Division of Continuing Education. And I'm just going to say a few words, and then I'll introduce Peggy. Um, mm -hmm. So here you are on the homepage of the certificate, right? I, I believe you can see my screen. I shared it. Uh, and we have a slider with all of the events that we have going on right now, including this webinar and the next uh, webinar next month, which will be offered by Trent. Um, so the certificate is a fully online professional development program for language educators. It is designed just for language teachers. And as such, it's pretty unique. It is not a research-oriented program. It is for in-service teachers. And this is why most of our courses, all of our courses are offered online and we offer more courses in the summer. Uh, the program is built to meet the needs of both uh, high-tech teachers, but also to meet the needs of teachers who are not very comfortable using technology and who want to become more confident. It's not a program where you are going to learn a lot of very high type of technical skills. We talk a lot about pedagogy, we talk about the tools, but we talk about ways to implement those tools in the classroom uh, for learning, not just for fun, but for what we like to talk about deep learning these days. Um, it's a practical program, it's very hands-on, and um, we do a lot of discussion uh, sometimes we do live discussions, we do asynchronous discuss discussions as well. Uh, we do a lot of lesson planning, we do collaborative lesson planning, we read articles, we read research articles, we read practical articles, and so this is basically um, the bulk of the, the type of activities that you do when you take courses. Um, like I said, the program is fully online. Uh, we are offering courses in fall, spring, and summer, and we have more courses in the summer. And um, to complete this very brief overview of the program, I'm going to take you to the register page and show you the courses that are currently open uh, for registration. We have a 10-week course on second language acquisition by Mark Knowles, uh, a friend and colleague of mine. And this is for teachers who have not taken an SLA course in a while and who are a little fuzzy on uh, the topic of SLA. It's, uh, you will read the research, but we also you will talk a lot about ways to apply this research to your classroom. It's a great course. And it starts June 3rd. And then the second course will be taught by me. It's a required course for the certificate. It's a 10 week course and it is a course on language and technology foundation. We talk about the SAMR model. We talk about using technology at higher levels, not just for fun, not just for entertainment. We talk about assessment. We we'll talk about ADA compliance, we talk about copyrights, we talk about um, universal design, uh, the ACTFL standards. So because it's a foundation course, we really cover a lot of the very important and um, important topics. And then we have a special topic course on digital games and language learning. This one is an eight week course. Um, no gaming experience required, but you will play games if you take the course. And finally, we have a one credit hour course. It is six weeks, and it is for our Rusty teachers who don't often have a chance to practice their French and their Spanish because they teach French or Spanish one all year long, and they get a little rusty. And this course pairs you with a native speaker, but at the same time, you also talk with your class about your experience, about the challenges of oral proficiency and maintaining it. We talk about oral language anxiety and how to get our students to, um, you know, get rid of this anxiety and feel more comfortable with speaking. So this concludes my little overview of the program. If you have any questions, you have my email uh, on the homepage. On the very first slide, you have a link um, to um, a series of webinars that I will be uh, leading on the summer courses. So I'm going to close this window. I'm going to stop sharing. And um, Peggy, do you want to take control of the screen for your presentation? And I'm going to introduce you. Um, so Peggy Veal is my friend and my colleague. She's a French teacher at the Colorado STEM School and Academy. Um, Peggy, I looked up your town, and your hometown is 50 miles from my hometown in France. Nice. So um, we're almost neighbors. And it's kind of funny that we met here in Colorado. 
You mean our hometown in France? In France, yes, yes, uh, 50 miles. Uh, your hometown is much bigger than mine, though, 10 times bigger. Um, and so today, Peggy is going to talk about teaching French through STEM or teaching French through STEM and through French. Um, Peggy, I'm going to let you share your screen so that you can share your slides. Um, and then at the end of the presentation, I will email everybody the slides so you will have them. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the chat room. Um, and if you have questions during the presentation, just uh, use the chat room and I'll, uh, I'll let uh, Peggy know that I have some questions for her. Sounds good, everybody? If you could just nod, make sure you can hear me. All right. I think you should be able to see my screen shortly. All right. Now I can't see you guys anymore, though. Yeah, it's a little odd, Peggy, to not. OK. Yeah, just making sure you guys are still there. <laughs> OK, so I'm just going to get started just with um, kind of how this came about for me, um, not only because I teach at a STEM school, but um, also because I am an addict of documentaries. Um, I don't know if you guys like to watch documentaries, but for me, especially French documentaries, um, I'm always looking for them on Netflix um, to see what else I can learn about. And I'm just one of these people that loves to watch um, how things are made and how things are built. And um, so one day I was just watching some documentaries on uh, YouTube actually, and uh, just fell on this documentary on how maple syrup was made. And um, it was a documentary from Canada, obviously. And so it was in French. And I'm sure you guys can relate when I say this. Um, I have a really hard time doing anything in my life without trying to figure out how I can use it in my classroom. Um, even when I'm in a store, usually if I, you know, I can't look at anything without thinking, oh, I wonder how I could use this in my classroom. Um, so um, this is kind of how this whole thing came about um, as far as incorporating STEM in my classroom, teaching French, um, even at kind of the lower levels, the French 1A and 1B, and then on to French 2 and 3. Um, so as you can see on the this slide with the title saying as if French wasn't enough. Sometimes it's easy to think, oh, I'm already, I already have a big heavy curriculum that I have to teach with grammar and vocabulary and all these other things that I have to teach in one year. How can I possibly incorporate science and technology and math and all those different things that are on our evaluation that we have to incorporate? Um, and now that STEM has become a thing, um, we hear a lot more, you know, that we need to add this onto the mix as well. So um, I guess my argument for that would be that we all have to face the fact that our kids in our classroom are most likely not going to become French teachers. So as much as we want them to understand the grammar and the vocabulary and be able to express themselves in beautiful formal register of language, um, truly what is probably going to happen is a much more minimal amount of communication and most likely not informal register. Um, so I figured with that, um, why not try to teach as much communication as I can and hopefully the grammar and the vocabulary gets, happens kind of in the, the, middle, the middle of that. Um, so as Edvige and I were discussing, there are a ton of immersion schools that are popping out everywhere. Um, we have all the Global Village Academies that are coming out. And then as Edvige said, Utah has hundreds of them now um, that are teaching other topics in a foreign language. So the kids are in first grade learning math in Spanish or learning social studies in French. Um, so I feel like that's kind of the way things are going. And if we don't adapt to that, we're gonna end up you know, losing our jobs or not being able to do what we are asked to do. Um, so, you know also that AP changed about, what is it, four or five years ago to an exam that is also theme-based, and those themes incorporate a lot of the STEM subjects, uh, such as the environment, the technology, um, and all different scientific topics that we have to incorporate, and why not incorporate them from the lower levels right away so that our kids can build up the vocabulary to be able to discuss things like pollution or 
um, natural phenomenon that happened around them. So um, some of the things that I like to use in the lower levels, the 1As and 1Bs, are resources that my parents used to use for me when I was little. Um, there are a lot of these on YouTube, and you can find books as well. Um, I'll show you some examples of videos as well. But they're basically the little kids' books that talk about where things come from. I have a couple on my bookshelf, like where does water come from? Where does um, food come from? Uh, where does the grass come from? And they're at a very low uh, level of vocabulary with very simple tenses, like the present tense. Um, so you can begin by using those. Um, and on YouTube, there are also videos. Um, I'll show you in just a second what they're called, but they're of the same concept of just a very simple, um, maybe kindergarten level topic like what is the temperature of the sun or uh, what is space, what's a star, what's a planet. And so you can begin with those simple words that you would teach anyway if you were teaching the weather or if you were teaching uh, nature words like trees and um, parts of the house also um, when you're teaching those units. So you really don't have to change a whole lot about what you're already teaching. You would just do it, do it via a topic that is STEM based. Um, so I just want to get real quick to what those videos are called on YouTube before I forget. Um, I have to look them up, but um, I think they're called, oh, I'll, I'll see on my, my future slide. I wish I would have put it right at this point of the presentation, but there are these little kid videos on YouTube that approach these same topics. So um, how are band-aids made? Or um, what does a doctor do? Those types of things. So it's really easy to find little kid um, resources on YouTube or on paper on books that you can use for STEM subjects. So when I watched my documentary on how to make maple syrup, I thought, wow, that's actually incorporating a lot of simple topics like how the tree works and how osmosis works. And mind you, I'm really bad at science. So don't think that I'm coming from this scientific background and that it was easy for me to incorporate it in my class because I'm really not a scientific person. So I was learning at the same time as the kids. But when I was looking at the documentary, it started off talking about the history in Quebec, of Quebec and the geography of Quebec. And then it talked about um, the different parts of a tree, the roots, the trunk, the branches, the leaves. And then it talked about the chemistry of what happens when the sun shines in the spring and when the temperatures rise and how that changes what the tree does and, and its overall job depending on seasons. So as I'm saying this, I'm sure you're thinking about, oh, well, I teach seasons and I teach the weather and that's, you know, the sun shines and it's warm and all those different things that I was already teaching in my French one class, um, I'm gonna stop for just a second because I just got a notification that my battery is low and I need to plug in and I forgot to do that. So one second. That's for me, I thought it was me. And so I'm fishing for my cable. All right. So while I'm doing that, does anybody have any questions? Is anything popping up that? Stephanie, Stephanie said that she knows of little videos called C'est quoi? Yeah, yeah that's definitely one of the um, YouTube channels that I like to see. Um, those are awesome because you can show them, you know, they're still fast paced, but you can use um, Edpuzzle or other different um, uh, websites that help you embed questions on videos. And then you can use them in the classroom as a, either something to finish a unit or to start a unit. Um, so, like I said, I was thinking about the things that I was already teaching. Oh, I've already taught the weather and I've already taught um, some things about Quebec when we started the year about why should I learn French. And um, then the documentary started talking more about what machines they were using or how um, the how people started cooking maple syrup when they base, barely had cauldrons 
And then they talked about how that's changed now and now they're using these really fancy machines. And then at the end of the documentary, it talked about um, the different types of maple syrup, the different colors of maple syrup, the different concentrations of maple syrup. And then it talked about how all of that goes into pricing the maple syrup. And that opened the discussion about the economy and the competitors and who else sells maple syrup. So as I was watching the documentary, I just kind of started jotting down some bullets, which you can see on the slide now, um, history, geography, nature, technology, marketing, and economy. And I was thinking, wow, that's really everything I need to incorporate in my class in one video. Um, so I'm going to, there's a link here that you can click. I don't know if you guys can click it from where, from this presentation, but um, it takes you to my folder, which I, um, Edvish, feel free to share it with anyone um, because this was all made by me. So there's no copyright issues and whatnot. But um, I decided to create a packet um, where I would start listing all the different vocabulary that I felt my students could use to go over this um, topic. And I mixed a bunch of vocabulary that they already knew, and then I added vocabulary that I felt would be completely new to them. Um, so there's a link to the YouTube video that I watched, the whole documentary. It's about 25 minutes long, um, and we covered it in the span of about three weeks. So it was quite a long unit. Um, the documentary goes into seven different sections, and it's done really well to where you can it goes back to a main page every three to four minutes and changes the topic. So it's really easy to stop after one bullet, like the chemistry of the maple tree, for example. Um, so I started off um, the lesson with, let's talk about chemistry. And if you are in semester two of French one, you have covered, um, or Spanish even, you have covered school subjects. So chemistry, la chimie, shouldn't be anything new. So you can just introduce um, l'érable, the maple tree. Um, and so then we talked about the different bullets that you can see here. And so those are guided notes that are, have blanks in them. And so we watched that portion of the video and they try. Did we lose the sound? Yes. And a lot of the kids had learned um, a lot of those concepts already in science. So a lot of it was, they were really proud to say, oh, I know what it's talking about. It's this, and um, it's the reaction of the sun with the leaves and the temperature. And so everything was more of a deduction, um, which is what I love about the incorporating STEM in my class is that they, they already know this stuff. We're just putting it in words that they can put on paper. Um, and then we did, I'm going to go back to my folder real quick. Um, I put together a sheet where the kids could see the parts of a tree and we talked about, um, this is a tree in the spring. It's coming, it's coming up. There we go. Um, this is a tree in the spring. What does it have on it? Different parts of the tree, the roots, the trunk. And then this is a tree in the winter. What's missing? Um, What's the difference between nighttime in the winter and nighttime in the spring? What's the difference between nighttime during uh, daytime in the spring and daytime in the winter? Um, so we took probably two lessons just to go over this, the different parts of a tree and um, the different seasons and all the vocabulary that they already knew. Um, so once we covered the parts of a tree and the seasons, then um, I showed them a history video. Um, so we, it's, our, it's also in this folder, I believe. Um, well, it's in the packet actually. So I'm gonna go back to the packet, the student packet. So there's a, a video that has the history of maple syrup. So it's a very short video on YouTube and it shows uh, two members of an Indian tribe where one ends up leaving a machete in the trunk of a tree and then comes back the next day and realizes that something is leaking from the tree and um he ends up putting it or this is a legend so it's kind of neat too because it goes into legend um and so it 
talks about how he brings some of this liquid home and his wife ends up putting a uh, roast in it or some kind of piece of meat thinking it was water. And then she cooks it in this. And then after she cooks it, it ends up being so sweet that they have this discussion about what was this and that wasn't water and where did it come from? And um, so it was a neat little story that the kids um, watched and the, the whole video on YouTube, this whole five minute legend video has very little speaking. It's actually mostly just um, pictures and um, people acting, uh, but there's, it, they're speaking in a native Indian language. So there's really no um, dialogue per se. So it was just the kids discussing, well, what happened here and what were they talking about and what did they do to the tree and what, um, you know, what happened from that. So, um, so that's what we talked about next um, was the, the trunk and what happens when uh, the syrup comes out or the, the maple water. Um, then uh, let's see if I can go into, so this is just the student packet. I have the teacher packet also in that folder that has all of the, the words that should be in those blanks. You don't have to watch the whole video to figure it out. But, um, we talk about how maple syrup used to be harvested with just little nails and buckets that were hooked up to the trees. And then um, we actually had a discussion as a class as far as what could be, what could be more modern? What, what would you do instead of having to go check the bucket every half hour or what, you know, and some kids actually came up with some ideas which then we went into talking about um, the tubing system that they have now that collects um, the maple syrup. So um, lots of vocabulary goes into the unit, which I also gathered on this document. So what we did for this activity, I gave them this document, which you're about to see. And originally they just have the French and the English and the illustration. So I did give them both of the words. Um, you could, I suppose, just give them the English and have them find the French or have the French and find the English. There's a Quizlet that I made here for it if you want to do Quizlet live, which my kids love, to practice the vocab. But based on the French word, English word in the illustration, they worked in partners to make a sentence and it had to pertain to uh, the making of maple syrup. So, um, when you're talking about norms of quality, the norm de qualité, they had to create a sentence that said something about the norms of quality for maple syrup. Um, you can see the word chemistry, la chimie. I mean, it's a fairly simple sentence. Chemistry is important in the making of maple syrup, but it does the job. So um, they were using the words in sentences. La lumière, light. Il a vu la lumière du soleil. He saw the light of the sun. Easy enough. Um, for les feuilles, the leaves, les feuilles ont beaucoup de couleur. Um, so, and then we get into words like photosynthesis. Um, and this is the part where, as I said, my kids were so proud to be able to say, oh, we learned this in science class and I, this is what happens. And um, so he was really proud to put together a long sentence for this one. So um, I'm gonna go back to the um, presentation real quick. So you can see in the packet, yeah? Peggy, there is a weird echo. Do you have another device nearby? Or it's almost like we're picking up. Did it just start happening? Yeah, it's, it, ha it started happening a minute ago, a couple minutes ago. Anyway, it's, it's Peggy, not. I have the air that came on about three minutes ago. Maybe that's causing. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't prevent us from hearing you, but I was just wondering. Everybody's on mute, so. It's okay. We can still hear you quite well, but I just was wondering. Okay. All right. Let me know otherwise. Um, so to go back a little bit about how I started, I have a, a big map of the world in my classroom, which you could just display on your projector as well if you don't have one. But um, in, this was completely done in French. So I walked over to the map and I asked in French, where is Quebec? And we had already talked about it with the, the class so they and they had to explain it to me so I could point to it so it's north it's south it's in Canada it's and I was you know playing dumb is it over here no is it over there where is it and then once we got to where it was then I said well 
where is France? And then we did the same thing. We talked about France and then we talked about somebody came from here to there, but it was an accident. And so they said, oh, and some kids knew a little bit about the history. So some kids interjected, oh yeah, they were looking for something, but they ended up finding something else. And some kids said Christopher Columbus. And I said, no, 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 not the same person. And um, so it was a very slow process entirely in French. It was kind of like telling a story, you know, we, it started off this way and somebody came from here to there and they were looking for something. What was it? What were they looking for? Um, and in the process of that, we talked about how um, Canada essentially was discovered or the Northwest Passage. And then we started talking about, well, who was there first? And the natives of Canada were there. And then talking about the legend of how they discovered the maple trees and um, showing the short video of um, what happened there. And then, like I said, I used the slides, sorry. Um, about the maple, sorry, they're testing the phone system. Um, a maple tree in the, in the winter versus a maple tree in the spring. We used a lot of cognates, the sun, the sky, the seasons, the, the leaves, the trunk, the branches, the roots. Um, and again, all of this was done in France, in French. So I'm pointing to a part of the tree and what is that called and what does it do? Um, and then we talked about the verb briller to shine. Um, so I just want to point out this was 1A and the kids got it um, using a lot of cognates and a lot of gestures it was kind of like TPRS so it it just happened very easily um, so then we went into weather in the winter it's cold the tree is sleeping you know and I'm, I'm doing the gestures the tree is sleeping in the spring the sun is shining it's still cool but not as cool at night it's cold, so the tree needs to stay warm. How does the tree stay warm? Um, and talking about pumping, the tree is pumping something. What could it be pumping? And it's pumping water, but water doesn't keep you warm. So it's pumping water with sugar in it. Um, and then the sugar goes up to the leaves. And then um, during the night, it comes back, or during the day, it comes back down and oh, well wait, if it comes back down, can we take it out? Yes, we can. We just make a hole in the tree and then we get the water that way. Um, so I still remember that particular class this year where the kids left like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. Isn't that cool how that happened? I Did you know I was doing this? And it was just really um, like they had just sat down to hear a story and participate in a funny story. So it was really cool. Um, the next day we did photosynthesis. So. I put the word photosynthesis in French on the board. They recognized it pretty much instantly. And then it was back to story time. Um, so what happens in photosynthesis and using pictures and cognates, um, we basically went over photosynthesis in French. Um, so this, these are just other ideas that you can do. I didn't use the interactive TPRS, but I suppose you could have a kid stand up and be the tree. And then um, another one can be the sun, and then you tell the story, oh, the tree is cold, and you know the kid who's the tree can show that they're cold, and um, oh, the sun is shining, and you know the kid who's the sun can send some rays. And um, so you, there's all kinds of different ways that you can do it. Um, I'm sure there are a ton of videos on YouTube on photosynthesis that you could show, like kid videos. Um, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Pear Deck, Pear Deck is um, a website that allows you to upload a PowerPoint that you have or a Google presentation and the kids have to put in a code, join a roster, and as soon as they put in the code, your PowerPoint shows up on their screen, on their laptop. My school is one-to-one, -one, um, but you could also just borrow computers or go to the computer lab to do that. Um, the good thing about them being able to have your PowerPoint on their screen instead of looking at your screen is that they can interact with you. So you can pause the PowerPoint and say, circle the trunk of the tree. And then on their own computer, they take their mouse and they circle the trunk. Or uh, the sun is shining, draw a sun. And then they can draw a sun on their screen. Or it could be multiple choice or any kind of interactive assessment um, that you want to do. Um, so then continuing with that lesson, we talked about, you know, water is a liquid. What's the difference between water and syrup, le sirop? 
Um, and then we built up more vocabulary there. Um, and then this is where we came up with how do we take water and make it syrup? What do we have to do to make it syrup? And so you have to cook it. And then we talked about how did they cook it in the 1800s when they were first there? Well, they used cauldrons. And then now we use mo uh, modern machines. Um, so then from this point, you could just end it there and say, okay, I taught how maple syrup is done. It was a cute lesson. The kids can do an infographic on what they learned. They could do, um, you can draw a picture, do posters. You could just leave it at that. My kids were so excited about the process that I had a kid who actually um, came home a few days later or came back a few days later and said, um, so I saw on the, at the store that there's all different kinds of maple syrup. So then we started looking into different concentrations. Um, and then it led to talking about, you know, how does that get regulated? Um, and once I had the students buy into the lesson, um, it just kept going. So I let them continue essentially. Um, then I had a kid, Jeremy, who is a senior who, uh, this talk about timing came back again a few days later and said did you see the story on the news about maple syrup and i said no what's what's happening and i guess there had been um, a new law that had been voted that there was a new organization that was now regulating the price of maple syrup and so all the people who owned um, maple trees and lands of maple trees couldn't just sell their own maple syrup at whatever price they wanted they had to go and sell their maple syrup to this organization and then that organization would sell it to the public and so we had a big great debate in the classroom about is that fair um should someone who's had maple syrup um like a sugar shack for years should they have to all of a sudden sell everything to a company instead of selling it themselves and um it ended up being a, a big debate about free enterprise versus, you know, how is that valuable to the economy versus being a small shack owner. And um, it was really, and they got pretty intense during that um, debate. So um, before I move on, do you guys have any questions? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. But, oh. Are they all asleep? <laughs> Somebody um, says she has an uh, IPA style unit on fitness and healthy eating that would be great to add more science to. Yeah, so you could totally do, uh, let them determine good diets or bad diets. Um, you know, how, I know that in my daughter's class, she's a, a junior this year, they are learning um, calories and how to count calories, um, how to determine how many calories something has in it. Um, and, and this leads us to a, a good point uh, we do a lot of projects in our classrooms where, um, for example, when you're doing the daily routine and we learn about school subjects, instead of having them just list their school subjects, why not having them talk about what they're learning in the classroom at the time in those classes? Um, so instead of just saying at 8.30 I have physics, um, maybe they could say in my physics class I am learning blank uh, photosynthesis or calories or something. Um, and it's a small step towards adding more STEM content, but um, it just gives them more challenges in terms of vocabulary and they have to look it up too. So, um, with this, I did have a student present about um, the making of maple syrup in NHD, um, talking about the progress and the free enterprise and all of that. So that was kind of a neat thing for me to see that my kids had gone on and used it for something else. Um, and then for extra credits, because I did this in October and we didn't have snow yet, um, I suggested that they wait for the next snowstorm and make la tire, which is like a maple syrup candy that you have to wrap around a little stick. And, um, you know, I didn't really talk about it at all after that, um, but I did have some kids that came back and submitted pictures of them cooking um, the maple syrup and making la tire using some snow. So um, I, I did have some kids who tried to do that before the snow came and they tried with ice and it didn't work. I still gave them the extra credit for working on it and um, trying to make it even though it wasn't with snow, but they saw that it didn't work. So here's one of my kids making it at home. 
Um, so, <clears throat> let's see. So other types of units that you could think about, um, this was just my thing with the documentary talking about maple syrup and it turned out to be useful because it was Quebec and Quebec is French speaking. I don't know if all of you attending this are French speakers or French teachers, um, but there are many things you can do with any languages. Um, if you watch the news, just look for, or if you read the paper or anything on the internet, just look for STEM topics that are happening in the everyday news. For French in particular, we are super lucky to have Thomas Pesquet, who is a, um, an astronaut currently on the ISS, the International Space Station, and he is constantly posting on Twitter. Um, he talks about um, what types of experiments they're working on on the ISS currently. Um, they have some different things that they're growing in the International Space Station. He talks about how do you take a shower in space. Um, he actually answers questions sometimes that students are posting. Um, and there's a ton of things that you can find online about his experiences up there and some of the things that he has talked about, um, not just in terms of what he's doing, but um, how he's feeling and um, some of the uh, more philosophical things that he's had go through his mind as he's been in space. Um, you can also find videos of his interviews, um, like different types that he's, he's spoken to students, um, and those are available on YouTube. So these are just conversations that he's had with the earth, um, with different schools, and you can have your kids tweet him, and he does answer some questions, not all the time, but he does answer them uh, when they're not repeated questions that he's had too many times in a row. Um, we had we were very lucky to be able to set up a contact with Thomas Pesquet on the ISS. Um, our school has a ham radio club, which is um, led by my husband. And so we were able to ask for the uh, authorization to do a contact with the ISS. And if you're ever looking into doing that, um, you would just go on this website. It's called ARIS, A-R-I-S-S. -S. Um, this is the French uh, education branch of the NASA in France um, and they have this whole explanation on how you can get a contact with an astronaut. It's actually done a lot um, with schools especially. They welcome um, schools putting together questions and um, the only tricky part of this request is number one it has to be approved. You have to prepare questions under very specific uh, under a very specific format um, they will come back to you and either approve or disapprove your questions based on um, whether they've already been asked too many times or if they're inappropriate or if there are questions that they are not able to answer. Um, we haven't had any of that happen. So, um, and some of our questions that we've prepared are, I'm going to show you what we have so far. Um, so we had our physics teacher ask, uh, the first question, due to the constant free fall of the ISS around the Earth's orbit, do you continue to feel the physical symptoms of the free fall? And if so, how do you adapt to this feeling? Um, and you see the word over at the end of each question. That's a requirement by NASA that you have to say that word so that the astronaut knows you're done with your question. So our kids worked on translating that, and it's not an easy question. So we worked on that after class um, with the French Honor Society, working in small groups as far as what would be the best words to um, translate that. Um, the next question, how much time is attributed to social, inter social interactions in a typical day on the ISS with Earth or with other astronauts? Um, so you can see that's not really a scientific question. It's more how much time do you get to talk to people? Um, and our third one is, who inspired you to be an astronaut, to become an astronaut? So very simple question. Um, and our last one is, do you see items entering the Earth's atmosphere or burning upon entering, and what does it look like? Um, so talk about getting buy-in from the kids, um, because they know that they're going to get to ask those questions directly to Thomas Pesquet. And um, we've talked multiple times about how they probably won't answer, they will not be able to understand the answer, but um, we'll go over that in class with the video later. So at that point, they'll just nod and we'll go over the answers together. Um, so it seems like a really uh, 
out of this world project, no pun intended, but it's really common. It's not something that you have to be super qualified to do. Um, you just have to request it and prepare your questions and send them for approval. Um, you just have to know about it. <laughs> Let's see, um, so that's one thing you can think about. Um, ask some of the kids if they are already in physics clubs or other scientific clubs, because I guarantee you that what they're doing in their clubs, you can incorporate in your class, because they're more like fun projects and things that um, can be easily incorporated. We also had um, our engineering department here does weather balloons. Um, and we have a lot of kids at Double Dip, you know, they're in French club and they're also in engineering clubs. Um, sorry, I'm having a lot of issues with my phone. Um, so we actually had um, our exchange school in France organize a balloon launch with us when we were there in March, um, which is a pretty big stretch as well. But um, basically all you have to do is, um, well, it's not all you have to do, but get, together with the club that does a scientific project like that and then incorporate a way to put some French into it. So talk about the different parts of the balloon, talk about the weather conditions and all the things that you need to know for a project like that. Um, another idea that I had that I haven't looked into yet, but our kids at STEM here are very much into video games. Um, and there is actually a website for Nintendo, um, let's see, and it talks about um, all the different um, games of Nintendo, but in French. So you could incorporate some technology that way that I feel the kids would really connect with because it's stuff that they like to do. Um, so let me close some of these so I know where I am. Okay. So for us, things just kind of happened. I want to say uh, perfectly in timing. Uh, we, I have been working for three years on uh, trying to build an exchange program for my school. Um, so two years ago, we went to France with a small group. I had about 15 kids. Um, we went to France and did, um, we stayed in host families and attended classes at a school called uh, Jeune, l'Institut de Jeune, which is more of an agricultural school. Um, so a little bit of an unusual type of school and it was also a boarding school. So the kids that we took there um, got to see a school that is, I guess, somewhat like their STEM school that has a different focus in education. Um, and they were taking classes on how to take care of animals and um, biomedical fields and all kinds of different things like that towards graduation. Um, unfortunately, the person that was taking care of the exchange on the French side was extremely disorganized. Um, when we were in France, he had forgotten most of the excursions we were supposed to do. So I decided not to repeat the exchange with that school. Last year, I worked with my original school that I went to when I grew up in France. Um, and we had a great trip, but unfortunately the school couldn't um, return, I don't wanna say return the favor, but they couldn't come here and do the other side of the exchange. So that wasn't going to work out for us as well. So I, um, through a couple of different people, was able to find a school, um, a very small school in Lille, which is a very small town in northern France, a public school with little to no funding. And I had my doubts as far as whether that would work. Um, but we met when I was in France, actually, last year. Um, and two teachers showed up. Um, the principal showed up and the mayor of the city showed up and that's how I knew pretty much that they they really wanted to do this so we sat down together and we talked about what our different objectives were for the exchange and we decided to start preparing it the mayor decided that this was important enough for her to put some funding into it and allow 25 kids of their school to come here to visit us in five days um, this is also how we decided that we were going to incorporate the ISS contact. So they took care of the technical aspect and I took care of the questions aspect. And um, that means our students got to have five questions on the panel of questions to the astronaut. Um, so 
Um, unfortunately, we were supposed to have the ISS contact when we were there in France in March, but as things go in space, um, it was postponed because um, astronauts have a lot of things to do in their daily tasks. And um, we were told several times that um, Thomas Pesquet had different things that he needed to work on and our contact was postponed. At this point, the contact has been postponed to the first week of May. Um, so obviously we won't be there to ask our questions live, but we have recorded them and um, the school over there is going to assist with making sure that the contact is done with our questions. It will be recorded via something called DATV, so we'll have audio and video of the contact. We'll get to see Thomas Pesquet talking to or answering our questions live. Um, and so when you think of all these different projects, um, for me, you know, the kids came back from France talking about how they are preparing questions for an astronaut. They have a sister school that they are now connected with, um, who is going to be here in five days. So their buy-in to the French program is huge. Um, they, it's not just a class that they're taking. It's uh, really something that is connected to what they're doing outside of the classroom. Um, it's, it's just an experience altogether. So um, with that, our principal decided to cap our Spanish program and expand our French program, which is so opposite to what I've always experienced in other schools. I've always been the French teacher that gets capped and then the Spanish teachers get hired <laughs> more and more. And it's been a complete turnaround lately um, where my principal has recognized the efforts and has um, decided to expand the French program. So, yeah. Did you guys have any questions? Thank you so much, Peggy. It's a wonderful project. Really great. Um, feel free to unmute your microphone. Um, ask your questions directly to Peggy. Or if you have mic issues, just use the chat window. Um, to ask Peggy some questions. I'm going to try to see if I can, I think I'm going to stop sharing so that I can actually see the other screen. There we go. Hey. So anybody questions about the maple syrup unit, the astronaut, the sister school? Let them in the, in the chat window. Um, and feel free to use any of it um, from the folder. Adish said she would um, send it to you guys. I will definitely email you the slides um, and you will have access to the material that um, Peggy is sharing with you guys. Mm -hmm. so, so do you guys have any ideas, things that you're thinking you could do with, um, like you said, the fitness and healthy eating would be a really good one. Because you could do a lot of parts of the body, you could do food, um, you can do science. Yeah, I think it makes sense to not start from scratch, but rather using things that yeah. you're already doing in your classes. Mm -hmm. What about math? What are some things that you guys feel you can do with math? Because we do temperatures and things like that, which is science, but it's also math, converting temperatures and... Um, any ideas? I know I did a, a unit, oh yeah, metabolism, aerobics, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Um, when we did, um, a, when I did a unit on clothing, we also talked about um, different hemispheres having different seasons. So when it's winter here, it's summer somewhere else, and then you can talk about different hemispheres, which the kids get really confused about. Well, is it still December over there? But if it's December, is it winter? Is it summer? Um, so you end up reviewing all the months of the year and all the seasons and the weather, clothing, what should you wear in December in that country versus this country? Um, so. so I've asked Peggy, and Peggy will write an article uh, about her telecollaboration project with her sister school in France for the FLT mag. I'm going to put the FLT mag in the chat window. It's a um, online magazine on um, language teaching with technology. 
it's written by teachers, it's for teachers, which is free. So, um, you know, feel free to subscribe or uh, follow mm -hmm. us on Facebook. And also, uh, so you'll see Peggy's article there this summer. We've been doing, I've been pushing a lot for te telecollaboration kind of projects. We actually have a course as part of the program on how to organize telecollaboration projects. Mm -hmm. I think they're a fantastic way to motivate students to really use the language and realize that it has practical applications outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then if um, you guys don't have any other questions, I'm just going to uh, announce the next webinar. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, maybe go back, let me go back to um, the certificate page. And the next webinar will be by um, Trent. And Trent is a uh, student in the certificate program, and he am um, scrolling. I think he's the last slide. There it is, and I take a picture before it slides away. Um, Trent is a student in the certificate program, and um, he will be talking about virtual reality in the language classroom. And uh, in case you find it intimidating, it's. Um, it's a really good project, but it's definitely a project that <clears throat> um, you could do in your own classroom. It's something that you could uh, replicate in your classroom. So Trent will fill you in on how it is project, the technologies involved, the activities that students did. What I really like about Trent's project is that he uses virtual reality, he uses Google Glasses, but his project is really truly student-centered. It is the students who manipulate the technology, it is the students who are really doing the activity. So we have that to uh, look forward to, and then uh, we'll have a couple more webinars, but I'll announce them a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, all right, everybody. Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, if you have any questions about um, the certificate program, please let me know. Um, don't hesitate to send me an email or send an information webinar. In the info webinar, I will show sample courses, sample discussion boards, sample activities. So this is you know, even sample reading, so you'll get a sense exactly of what you're committing to um, if you are, um, if you decide to join us. All right. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you. And um, to leave the meeting room, just click mouse over at the bottom right of your screen and click end meeting. Peggy, if you want to hold on for just a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to stop the recording.